What's up guys, Snippy Sniper here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to reduce your input delay if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is launch the NVIDIA control panel. This is where you can change all the graphics settings for your for all your applications. So you want to go to manage 3D settings. It might just show up as 3D settings. Click the plus. It'll show up as 3D settings. Manage 3D settings. And then you can change global settings. Uh, if you're not playing graphically intense games that you want the graphics to look amazing. If you are playing Fortnite though and you want to do that separately, you can choose Fortnite Client Windows 64 Shipping.exe from this list of programs. Sometimes you have to add it, find the file, Fortnite Client Windows 64 Shipping.exe. Once you do that and you add it, you can go down and you can see this list of options. The first thing is sharpening. You don't want to mess with that. That is just an extra thing that happens that a GPU has to render. You want that always off. You want this to be off as it says right down here. The image will be less blurred at higher settings, however, you may experience a decrease in performance. And you can see 2x, 4x, 8x, and 16x. You, you want that to be off since this is just trying to make the image look better, and that means your GPU has to work harder and you will have higher input delay. Anti aliasing. This you want to always have ticked off unless you are trying to get like cinematics for a montage or highlights or whatever else. Alright, the next setting is anti-aliasing gamma correction. You want this off, it's another setting similar to anisotropic filtering. It's just another thing that it has to do. Your colors should still look good without it, so just leave that off. Next is anti-aliasing mode. You want this to be off. Unless you're doing cinematics, you want this to be off, like fully off. Not application controlled and off in Fortnite. You want this to be fully off. Next, we have anti aliasing transparency. It says multi sampling provides superior performance, super sampling provides superior quality. Switch this. I usually have it off. According to this, multi sample is supposed to help. You can test it out. I haven't really done too much testing with this setting. I just know that I have really low input delay without it on. The next setting is background application max frame rate. This it doesn't really matter, this is just personal preference. If you sit, have like Chrome up or any other application that you want, want to focus on instead of Fortnite, then you can just set that to like on in 30 FPS or 20 FPS, just so that it's not taking up a bunch of your CPU or GPU in the background. The next setting is CUDA GPUs. This is basically just selecting which GPU to use for Fortnite. Choose whichever one is your main GPU. If you do recording or streaming or anything of that sort and you have a secondary GPU, then it should pop up right here. And you would just untick that second one. You would click use these GPUs, untick that second one and tick this one, your main GPU and hit OK. It'll automatically switch it so that you're only using the one you selected for Fortnite and then you can use the other one for recording. Okay, the next setting is low latency mode. What you wanna do is you wanna always have this on ultra in the NVIDIA control panel because it helps your input delay a lot, hence the name. You can change it within game, but sometimes your game settings get reset for whatever reason when it updates the file and you wanna just keep it on ultra here and it'll stay as ultra. The next setting is max frame rate. This is just personal preference. I have it off, I just change it in game. You can change it if you have a specific monitor type, like a 170 hertz monitor, then you can turn this to on, change that to 170, and then click OK, and then it'll be at 170. I just have it off and control it through game. Monitor technology. This is just whatever monitor you have. If you want to use G-Sync to prevent tearing and stutters, use G-Sync compatible. And if you don't have a G-Sync compatible monitor, then it might not, the setting might not show up. I'm not completely sure, but it'll automatically be fixed refresh if you don't have a G-Sync compatible monitor. Okay, the next setting is multi-frame frame sampled AA or anti-aliasing. And you want to have this off because what this is doing is it's trying to prevent the artifacts from anti-aliasing, which anti-aliasing is trying to make curves or corners look look more smooth and not ha be pixelated so you want to have this set to off because that's just going to take up more of your gpu all right the next setting is open geo rendering gpu 
This doesn't really apply for Fortnite since I don't believe it's an OpenGL game. You can select your highest performing graphics card if you really want to, just to be safe but you should just be able to leave that as is and it should not affect it. The next setting is preferred refresh rate. What you wanna do is you just wanna, you, you can leave this as application controlled because this only applies to games that, that, don't, that only have like a 60 hertz refresh rate cap. I'm not sure, exactly sure of any examples of these types of games, but if you hit highest available, it will send to your monitor and it will give you the highest available by your monitor. So in my case, I have a 144 hertz monitor, uh, so it will override the application and try and output 144 hertz. Okay, power management mode. You wanna have this at prefer maximum performance always because maximum power, that's what it's talking about is the most efficient power consumption, which is not what you want. You want to get the highest frames, which means maximum performance. Okay, so I'll quickly go through the last few of these. The shader cache you want to have on because this is just making it so that it doesn't have to re-render stuff that it could have already had saved. The cache is just storing information, so it's storing these shaders so it doesn't have to re-render them. This texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization. You want to have this to on because as you can see down here it says select on for higher performance with minimal loss in image quality and select off if you see shimmering in objects. So you want to have on so that you get higher performance. Texture filtering, negative LOD bias, you want to have this to allow, as it says down here, allow for higher performance and set to clamp when anisotropic filtering is enabled for better in image quality texture filtering quality you you want to have this at high performance so that you get the most fps if you have quality or high quality it will try and render it as in as high quality obviously as possible and you want to have the highest frame rate as possible so set it to high performance trilinear optimization texture filtering i haven't messed i haven't benchmarked this setting at all i have just read down here it says set to on for higher performance with a minimum loss in image quality and set to off for the best image quality so you want to have this on so that it will have minimal loss of image quality and the high higher performance benefits next is triple buffering um you want to have this off always be, unless you have vsync on and are playing like a graphically intense game that you want to look graphically amazing if you, as it says down here turn the setting on improves performance when vsync is also on now vsync you want vsync to be off always for fortnite at least vsync it increases input time and lowers frame rate at the same time and it it just makes it look smoother the image looks smoother but if you are trying to get the most fps then and, and low input delay do not have that on and then you can just ignore vr pre-rendered frames that doesn't really matter this isn't a vr game so now hit apply in the bottom right and then it should do a like some flashing like that and then it'll it'll uh take effect and this, these are the best settings for fortnite okay now launch up fortnite go into your game settings and then go scroll all the way down and record replays as it says recording replays can reduce performance and take up hard drive space if you are low on space then definitely turn this off this takes up a fair amount of space and if you want the highest performance turn uh, turn these off it depends on preference usually this doesn't make too much of a difference i i have it on to bod review but um if you really want the most out of it then turn this off Okay, in the video settings, make sure your frame rate limit is ticked one higher than uh, the refresh rate of your monitor. So my monitor is 144 hertz. I turn it to 160 to reduce stuttering and uh, hitching and make sure that my input delay is the best it can be. Down here in graphics quality, I have everything to near and low because I I personally don't need it. I haven't noticed a difference in view distance at all. I I have set it to epic and it doesn't hurt my frames too much and it, I still didn't notice a difference I can still see people from the same distance away so I have it on near okay and under advanced graphics make sure vsync is off if you're trying to get low input delay and high fps I personally have performance mode on because I it helps my fps it boosts my fps by like 20 or 30 and reduces hitching and 
I have it so that the build graphics are like DX11 and DX12. You have to go in the game files to do that. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I would highly recommend using performance because it looks the same as DX11 and 12 if you change the build graphics and uh, it boosts your FPS by a lot and input delay. To get your build graphics to be like DX11 and DX12, do Windows key R. This will t uh, should pop up with run. Then you do percent local app data percent and then click OK. And then you go down to Fortnite game right here. Double click on it and then go to saved config and then Windows client game user settings. Now click properties and then make sure read only is unchecked. If it is checked, it will not work. The change will not take effect. Once you do that, click OK. Now double click on it or right click and click open or edit. And then you can go in here, the game files, right here, to change settings. A bunch of these settings are within Fortnite, like within Fortnite's general settings, but some of them, like the build render mode, is not. Make sure you have disable mouse acceleration on true, unless you want mouse acceleration on for some reason. It adds mouse acceleration within the game, even if you have it off on Windows, so make sure you have that off and set to true with a capital T. The cap the caps matter in this. So if you do a true with a lowercase t, it will not work. It will not take effect. Scroll down all the way to the bottom where you see D3 DR HI preferences. B use uh, D3 D1 2 in game. Set that to false. And then also, this is the mobile graphics right here. Prefer feature level ES31. Make sure that is set to false as well. If both are set to false, it will revert to the DX11 build graphics. And then what you do is you click Control S or File Save, and then you can close it. Right click on the file, Properties, Read Only, and then Apply, and then click OK. And that's all you have to do to get your build graphics back to DX11, DX12 while getting that performance boost and input delay boost. Thanks for watching, comment snippy in the comments below if you made it to the end of the video. Please drop a like and subscribe if you liked it. Note that I did not make up all of these tips to boost your performance and input delay. I tweaked the, the video settings myself, but some other stuff like the build render mode were not mine. I will link them in the, in the description below. Uh, be sure to check them out as well. I'll see you in the next one.